figuring out your tools as an aspiring artist is one of the most challenging things. What I want to share with you in this video is some advice specifically relating to setting up your sketching and drawing environment. This is where we're going to discuss how you actually apply pencil to paper and the really key things that I found over 20 years of drawing as a professional that I think actually make the difference. The question often is, do I buy a 20 cent pencil or a $5 pencil? And while I think that often more expensive things can be better, what I've really found over the years is that it's most important to tailor your drawing and sketching setup specifically to your own ergonomic needs and that that's really where most of the benefits are going to come. And not all of those ergonomic needs need to be improved via money. A lot of them are just about understanding the fundamentals of drawing. And that's really what I want to share with you in this video. Let's get started. All right, welcome to The Drawing Codex. My name's Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years. And on this channel, we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing, and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. Now, if you'd like to learn more about line and color illustration, you can check out my free quick start guide. It's aimed to get you up and running quickly, creating your own line and color style in Photoshop. I focus on creating a simple, reliable process to get this done, and I go through all of the steps from thumbnail to finished image, and I'll also share with you all of the brushes and PSDs and other things that I use day to day in my professional work, drawing comic books and concept art. It's free, the link will be in the description, go check it out. All right, so there's a lot to unpack here. So we'll jump over to the drawing table in a second and I'll sort of show you what I'm using and what my general advice is. I think that the most important thing here is to understand that the key is how the pencil interacts with the paper and that can be a combination of the pencil and the paper and more specifically what is underneath the paper but that also what you have to take into consideration is the ergonomics of moving that paper around and of getting it perpendicular to your line of vision so that you are not viewing it with any distortion. So what I'm going to cover is how to sort of think about these things when you're drawing um, on the go, like how your sort of portable sketchbook sessions might go, and also how to think about it if you're sitting down at a desk day in, day out, so full time or maybe part time. But either way, you kind of have a, a sitting down and spending a lot of time, you know, in a single spot drawing because we can optimize the process a little bit better and make it a little bit more, um, you know, useful um, if we're not sketching on the go. And I'll also share with you at the end the tips that I've really, really found helpful. Um, if you want to customize this and get this exactly right for you, that you know I found are the most important things to focus on if you're a professional and you're really going to sit here all day, every day, drawing at the table. Again, this is something that I have done all day, every day when I was drawing comics with pencils back in the day. These days I'm mostly digital, but I draw all the time and I think it's still one of the best ways to be creative and to express your creativity and also to learn to draw. Anyway, that's all for the introduction. Let's jump over to the drawing table and we'll actually get stuck in. All right, so let's talk about pencils first because again, you need something to draw with. Now, a big part of what I wanna talk about is that certainly pencils are important, but they're a little bit more personal. I think that just the way that a pencil feels and the way that it kind of responds to the way you draw and the type of line that you want to put down is the most important aspect of the pencil. The real key you have to pay attention to is how the pencil and the paper interact with each other. So a large portion of what I want to talk about in terms of sketching setups here is how to actually set up the paper to best support the type of pencil that you're using. Now, just as a brief overview, however, there's a wide variety of types of pencils and you know tools that you can use. Here, again, normally for this channel, I'm drawing with some black wing matte pencils. And in that case, you're going to need a sharpener. 
I'm often using a kneadable eraser as a really simple sort of tool that you can take with you. And typically, you know, if I'm, you know, sketching on the go or something like that, I'll just kind of put a bit of something, you know, just kind of at the back of the sketchbook like that. Right, so it's kind of stuck there, and I, and I find that works really well. It's one of the main reasons that I use a sort of you know kneadable eraser. But again, you know, you can have a, a very sort of expensive pencil, or you can have one of the cheapest pencils that you can buy. Again, I think these are very much in the realm of that kind of 10 20 cent pencil. Once you're all said and done, you know, you can buy boxes of hundreds of these for not that much money. Whereas a black wing is going to be, you know, uh, again, depends whether you buy them in bulk and, and where you buy them and stuff, but they're going to be more in that sort of, you know, two, three dollars plus range. Similarly, with mechanical pencils, again, you can spend a, you know, fair amount. You can get sort of fancy ones. Again, this is a Rotaring uh, 600.5 mechanical pencil. Uh, there's nothing that special about it. It's nice and weighty in the hand. A really good middle ground pencil is the Pentel P20 series. So this is a P209, which is a 0.9 millimeter lead. But the most sort of common lead that you see is a going to fit into a Pentel P205, which is a black version of this. These are pencils that you can often get, you know, all around the world. You can even get them from office supply stores, and they're just a really simple, reliable pencil. Here's my sort of cheapest uh, mechanical pencil that I think I've ever sort of bought or owned. And as I've talked about previously, I really got used to using this one. And even though it was just a dollar from, uh, you know, an office supply store, sort of news agency store, uh, you know, yeah, this will do the job. So the pencils really are a matter of taste. And, you know, depending on how hard you want to press, even something really simple like this might do the job. Although, again, I recommend trying to go for somewhere around that kind of middle ground where, again, you know, you don't have to necessarily spend the most. But, you know, if, if you just get something that's kind of in that sweet spot, again, something like this with some decent Pentel LEDs as well, I think that'll serve you really well. Likewise, with uh, the pencils, you can go for something fancy or... Um, again, you know, something very simple like a Mono, a Tombow Mono 100 or Mitsubishi High Uni pencil. Um, but yeah, basically any artist grade pencil is going to do a great job. The real thing is how does that sort of connect with the paper and give you the right feel? And also, how does the paper surface kind of take the right amount of lead off? Again, I think a lot of these are to do with essentially the amount of padding and the way that we kind of stack the paper and, you know, just use it day to day. So that's a major part of what I want to talk about. All right. When it comes to sketching on the go, there's a huge variety of options. So again, I don't want to review all of the sketchbooks and materials and things that, you know, I normally, you know, would sort of dig into. I want to give you some very broad strokes here. So this is a sketchbook that is a Strathmore 400 series. We can kind of see it down there. And this is a sketch paper. The grade of the paper really is, again, probably due its own video, uh, specifically how all of those things work. But the key here is that the hardbound sketchbook gives you a number of practical solutions. It gives you a nice stack of paper. And what that means is you have a little bit of a soft press. So when I'm drawing, if I'm drawing in a sketchbook, it yeah it really allows me to you know press at a nice soft cushion, right? So as I'm pressing, as I'm drawing, right, there's a softness to it. So what that means is that I'm unlikely to you know really get some sort of damage to the paper. There's a bit of softness there with the touch. And that means even if you have a cheap pencil or a really hard pencil, you're going to be able to get a slightly kind of softer line with it. And from my, to my taste, just this kind of softness and cushion that you get from stacking paper in a sketchbook is really, really good. The other thing that the sketchbook gives you is the tilt functionality. So this means that, again, what I can do is tilt this up on a surface so that, uh, you know, this allows me to kind of make sure that my eye line is actually directly um, perpendicular to the paper surface, which again will really aid your the accuracy of your drawing. 
And I think when you are drawing on the go, that's really important because often you're going to be on a couch or um, again, at a coffee shop, um, at sort of, you know, wherever you're sort of studying drawing, wherever you are. And having that sort of hard surface, I think is really good. The other thing that it'll give you is obviously it protects the pages really nicely. So, you know, I've still got all of these drawings that I have sort of done as demos and, you know, they're pretty, they're in pretty good condition. And that's also something that this sort of sketchbook will give you. However, these things too do tend to be pretty expensive, but I think I found uh, in many cases there are a lot of really, really good options, and that's what I want to talk about next if you're on a budget. So if money is more of a concern, which I know for a lot of artists it is, especially in the beginning, I think one of the best things that you can do is again try and replicate all of those things that a hardbound sketchbook will give you, but again, just sort of lowering the budget quite a bit. And I've done a huge amount of sketching this way, and I think this is a really good solution. So what I have here is a sort of probably one to two dollar clipboard that you can buy at an office supply store. So it's just a clipboard that you can clip uh, essentially copy paper to. And this gives you essentially a very, very similar result. You can see that, uh, you know, this has probably been jammed in a, uh, you know, sort of bag somewhere because I was, you know, rocking around with this for quite a while. I haven't used this for quite some time uh, just because I don't do any sort of portable sketching but these days. But, um, you know, this works just as well, in my opinion, to a hardbound sketchbook. And there's a lot of benefits that come from, you know, just sketching on loose leaf paper. In this case, all I have is literal sort of copy paper. Um, try and get stuff that's not coated, you know, sort of... Uh, Recycled paper is often, you know, a better bet because it tends not to have any sort of coating that uh, printers would use. But um, the, what you want to do is just get one of these and just get a nice chunk, a nice stack of paper, jam it in there. And again, you know, you can even sort of put, you know, old bits of paper. Typically, I take the ones that I've done and I put them sort of at the bottom here. Again, you've got a few sort of random sketches there. And, uh, you know, I also put some here, you know, if I want to sort of look at... Again, I forget I was designing some little sort of character, you know, and then you can kind of reference. So even though this is budget, it is actually super, super functional. And I've done a huge amount of professional work, just uh, again, concept design level work and sketching work and preparatory work this way. Um, in many ways, this can actually be better than a hardbound sketchbook. But uh, again, you know, it, it tends to, what you find is it, it's, it's harder to sort of keep track of pages once you're done. But apart from that, from a functional level, if you have some way of kind of organizing the pages as you sort of finish them, maybe again, you know, a sort of good uh, medium and sort of throwaway pile for your sketches, just something like that. I think this is actually one of the best solutions out there. And it gives you the most important sort of two things that I think you need from a portable sketching sort of setup. And that is again, that even though this is a bit more floppy, you still can kind of rest it and, you know, do a lot of drawing and you know figure out some stuff while your eye line and your sort of sight is perpendicular to the drawing surface perpendicular just means again here's my here's my line of sight and bang right it's kind of at right angles to the drawing surface as opposed to um you know if if sort of the the tilt the drawing surface is tilted then again i'm not seeing it straight on right it's exactly the similar similar to this right you can see this page straight on and if I kind of tilt it, then all of a sudden the drawings are distorted. So you want perpendicular um, sort of uh, view of the drawing surface. But again, this is one of my favorite drawing setups. And uh, yeah, I don't know why I don't use this much anymore, but mostly because I just don't draw on the go these days. All right. So if you are thinking about like a fixed drawing table, a fixed drawing setup where similar to this one, again, I'll show you a photo of kind of what this setup looks like on my actual desk. It's a little bit convoluted and not quite as sort of warm and fuzzy from an artist's perspective because I've got cameras and um, sort of other gear everywhere. So, you know, th this drawing setup here, you know, what I kind of see looks a little bit sort of technical. You could set this up obviously and make it look really nice. Again, I think the two things that you want are exactly the same. You want to be able to have some ability to tilt the surface of the paper to control it. And I think especially when you are drawing 
fixed, right? You're, you're at a fixed desk. I think this is super important because you also want the ability to be able to kind of rotate that page, right? Get the right line. So you need the, the ability to kind of tilt the surface that you're sort of drawing on a little bit, um, rotate it around, move it around. That actually gives your arm a lot of freedom to be able to sketch nicely. So at a pinch, these, this kind of solution will work okay, i.e. having a sketchbook here that is more of like a sketch pad, right? So this can be a really good sort of option. But there's a couple of problems with doing it this way. One is that, again, you know, as I sort of tilt this surface, uh, you know, I, I'm sort of dealing with a fairly sort of floppy bit of paper, right? It doesn't work that well. And the other thing is we kind of have this lip on the sketchbook, right? So it, it's just a little bit more annoying, especially if the sketchbook is small, right? So this one's quite small. And you can see, you know, if I'm sort of drawing over here, right, my hand is kind of bumping into the edge of that. So even though these can be really handy to have, it's not the most sort of optimum way of kind of working. Uh, but uh, again, you know, if I'm just sort of sketching and I want to prioritize having a collection of these that's quite easy, uh, then again, this kind of option is okay. The sort of sketch pad on a sort of drawing surface. But again, there's a few other little things and wrinkles to this that again, I wanna talk about next. So the first is that if you actually wanna optimize that drawing experience, I think one of the easiest, cheapest things you can do is to create a, you know, sort of leanable drawing board, right? We call this sort of a drawing board or a drawing desk. Now, the expensive, fancy way of doing this is to, is to have a, a sort of inclined drawing table, right? So you're at a specific drawing table. The drawing table is at an incline and you kind of sit at it. And I've had those in the past, but I, I tend to find that actually, uh, I've actually found this drawing board to be a better solution. And that's where you have a sort of rigid board of some kind. Again, this is a sort of an A3 or 11 by 17 ish size uh, sort of clipboard essentially. And this is again, another sort of one to $2 uh, purchase, maybe two to $3 purchase at an office supply store. And you do the same thing with this as you did with that black clipboard. What you do is just throw a bunch of paper into it, right? Similar to this and get a nice pad. So again, that can be a really sort of good solution for, for doing that. And again, this allows you very simply to lift up, right, and get a nice sort of rigid surface to draw on. And again, you can pad this out and put exactly what kind of paper you want on it. Again, similar to this, you could kind of lay it with a high quality uh, drawing paper, or you could just put sort of copy paper on it. Um, but the key here is having some maneuverability, right? So this is super important, being able to incline the surface, get your eye line perpendicular to the drawing surface, and also just being able to still shift it around a bit. So a drawing board is often better than a drawing table because you can actually sort of move around a little bit, right? I can kind of lean back in my chair. Um, you have a little bit more mobility, a little bit more flexibility, I think ergonomically and on your back and wrists and all those things, being able to move a little bit more. Um, and also you can still kind of rotate it a bit, right? So I still have the ability to rotate it on a surface and, uh, you know, sort of see how I go. Now, the thing is, this is a fairly small drawing board. So this is good for little bits of paper. Um, what I want to talk about next is, you know, sort of what you can do if you're really trying to create very large pieces and you're really angling towards that sort of professional work where you're going to be creating a lot of really, really high quality work there and it needs to be just so. Now, the solution there for a larger, more sort of professional drawing surface is um, essentially a larger drawing sort of board, right? So what I've got here actually is that this, and again, I'll flash up that sort of, uh, you know, photo of the drawing surface so you can kind of see it, is that this is actually a very large drawing clipboard. Um, again, if I sort of move this over here, you can see this, is, this paper here is actually sitting on a clipboard. And just kind of having that as a drawing surface allows me to do a couple of things. One is, again, if I had this set up a bit differently, which I don't because my main priority here is filming, 
Um, but if I didn't, then I could have this again easily maneuverable so I could kind of move it up or down. Now, again, there's lots of other options there for those kind of drawing boards. You could go to a hardware store, get some sort of uh, plywood and just ask them to sort of cut it to exactly the size you want. Again, that might seem like a lot of work, but it's relatively cheap. And that way, again, if you get some quite thick plywood, um, again, I'll just see if I can go find the one that I have. Boom. Yes, I found it. So again, this is just a bit of plywood and... Um, you know, uh, this is just from the hardware store again, so it's quite thick. And the advantage here is that you can cut these to be exactly the size you need, right? These can be exactly precisely the size you want. And that means you can kind of maximize the space you've got on your desk. You can get it exactly as big as you can get it, as small as you want it. Again, once things get too big, they become unwieldy. So you typically want to cut things and get it exactly right. What you do here is you put some ball clips um, or some sort of other clipping device to sort of clip your paper here. And again, what I'd recommend is doing a, a similar kind of little adjustment, oh, which is uh, exactly the same as what I've got here, which is that I have a stack of paper that is actually clipped to this drawing table here. So again, that's just sort of giving me that pad. So what you do with, you know, similar, doesn't matter which sort of clipboard or how you make it, you just kind of stack bits of paper on top of it and sort of make them a base and sort of clip them there. Even if it's just one or two, that will give you a little bit of sort of give there. And I find that's a really, really good solution. Um, so again, you know, really, really good idea. Now, this stuff might seem basic and like, oh, you know, don't I need to spend more or less or whatever? What you really want to focus on as a professional artist is optimizing the experience and the efficiency for what you do. It doesn't have to be fancy or expensive. It just has to fit you. And what that means is how big are you? How big a board do you want to sort of easily be able to manipulate? What's light enough for you? If you're really big, you might, you know, be able to handle a big one, right? This thing could be, you know, uh, a meter or uh, what would it be like three, four feet wide. You know, it could be huge. And, uh, you know, you can just sort of tilt that up and move that around and that's fine. Uh, you might want something smaller. You might want something that's semi-permanent. But again, if you just go to a hardware store and you just sort of buy a um, sort of plywood board and say, hey, can you cut it up to this size and this size? They'll probably do that for you. And that will actually give you one of the best drawing experiences there is because this is light. It is hyper, hyper rigid. This thing is absolutely not going anywhere. This is going to give you a rock solid drawing experience. And then you can kind of put your board down, right? You can move it around a little bit. Um, you can clip your art to it and you can also sort of tilt it up. And the real thing that I like about, uh, again, you know, using this type of process is that, again, you know, you can you know, put exactly what type of paper you want on the board. You know, you can put a whole pile of copy paper and, you know, just get that pad exactly right. Or you could get some, you know, watercolor paper, whatever it is, right? You can get that pad feeling exactly right. And again, it's this combination that I think is really, really valuable. So don't worry too much about spending money. Worry about spending some time really picking the pencil that you like, and then dialing in again, sort of what softness do you want to feel? Um, making sure that again, you can easily manipulate this. You can get your um, line of sight perpendicular to the board. Those are really are the most important things. Can I easily move it? Can I get it perpendicular um, to my line of vision? Is it sort of soft enough, right? Do I have some padding there? Um, that's really all that matters. Uh, and, and again, that's uh, in my experience is the most important thing. If you're sitting here as a professional drawing on this surface, you know, all day, every day, it's just a matter of customizing it and making it yours. All right. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an overview of what's important and what's not for those different scenarios. Again, just to recap, I think the most important thing is to kind of pick the pencil that really kind of expresses who you want to be. Again, it doesn't have to be expensive, although I tend to find that the more expensive pencils specifically are a little bit better. But uh, again, I have a whole video on that calling, uh, talking about, you know, fancy pencils and are they worth it? 
often the mid-grade stuff is really good and you just have to find the thing that works for you. When it comes to paper, I think one of the most important things is getting the feel right. How much pressure do you sort of put down before you get a line? Is it soft? Is it hard? What do you like? Now, when it comes to you know what actually matters, I think that getting just your body in relation to the drawing set is the most important thing. And this is where, again, you can use anything with your sketching at home. Again, what you really need is a drawing board. The drawing board is the most valuable thing because it allows you to quickly and easily just make sure that you get your line of sight um, perpendicular to the drawing board. So again, that's where we sort of want to make sure that our line of sight is, you know, perpendicular or at right angles to the drawing surface. This means that we don't see it as a distortion. Again, super important. Um, so I think if you're drawing on the go, we can do this through two ways. I think hardbound sketchbook is a really, really good option if you have the money to, you know, purchase a bunch of these and, and really sort of dig in. Otherwise, I think something that I've also used that's just as good really from all practical purposes is just a super cheap clipboard plus copy paper or, you know, a slightly nicer set of copy paper that, you know, is sort of tuned to what you want. Again, getting that pencil and paper combination just right. If you're sort of thinking about drawing professionally, again, you know, you can have a drawing table and I think that can be useful, but I've actually found that a drawing board is the best solution for me and I think it allows you to kind of customize it exactly right. Again, my recommendation for how you actually do that is maybe buy a few of these sort of cheaper clipboards, buy a few different sizes. You can get them smaller than this. You can get them much larger than this and sort of get a feel for like the space. How big are you? How big do you need this to be? But a drawing board essentially allows you to kind of rest it on a drawing surface and draw uh, you know, on a table, you know, get it really you know, perfect. Um, and it also allows you to maybe sort of sit back a little bit right and, and make sure that again your line of sight is still sort of relative to the board i think a drawing board is good because you can also you know sit back you can relax you can move forward it's much better ergonomically now once you kind of figured out exactly what size you want again i think the biggest kind of hack here is just to go down to a hardware store get someone to cut it they'll often cut it at the hardware store if you sort of share the dimensions you want so you just buy a big board you say can you cut it to this size and then just throw away the rest or sometimes you might be able to get like a few different size boards anyway but this stuff is super rigid um you know like a ply like this right is is going to be you know if it's like a giant uh, you know sheet it's going to be a little bit wobbly once it's this side is it is once it's this size it is super rigid super lightweight very easy to maneuver and again you can just put some clips on it stack the paper get it exactly right so you're just pressing down again you can use a combination of papers you can put some papers underneath that are just there to give you the right feel and then what you want to do is create as a professional a really consistent surface so you're putting your sort of you know finished drawing um again i don't have one here but again your finished drawing paper that's your high quality paper you're putting it on top of here right and you're just getting the same effect every time so you kind of stack it with a series of bits of paper you put some bull clips on that right you sort of lock that down and every time you're doing a new drawing right you just sort of put it there and work on that and it gives you a really consistent um, sort of feeling and again you can also you know with a drawing thing like this you know you can take it somewhere you can be someone who's you know aspiring to be professional but you can just be taking that and uh, you know put it on your kitchen table right and it gives you a very 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 good drawing experience again something that i think is probably better than a giant drawing table again unless you really need that and you have a studio you can set it up again by all means um you know if you use one of those it's great but again those are the core things paper feel softness make sure you have a rigid board rigid surface of some variety and make sure that you can make and keep your line of sight uh, the right angle relative to the drawing surface. If you do that, then you basically handled and you know dealt with all of the major bases that I think are going to make a difference. Anyway, that's all I got for this one. Let me know in the comments if you've got any sort of additional drawing tips or hacks or ideas, any additional questions. I'd love to hear what you think about this topic. Other than that, we'll catch you around. Happy drawing.